کنفرانس در سنای آمریکا درباره تحولات خاورمیانه ایران و اشرف واشنگتن 19 می 2011 29 اردیبهشت 1390 سفیر دل دیلی awful time and this is a dangerous time it's awful because because we have 35 dead and over 350 wounded and it could have been avoided iran is a is a renowned terror-based country it has a well-known rocket and missile delivery system and will soon have an illegal and inconceivable nuclear capability Elimination of Camp Ashraf started, first attempted 28-29 July 2009, and it has been continuously squeezed till 8 April 2011. Terrorist List has brought the United States and the Iran government onto the same team. It is confusing to ourselves, to the world, and to our friends how Iran and the United States can be on the same side. This terror listing must be stopped. Secretary of State Clinton can take the MEK off the list immediately and stop all of Iraq's justification to attack Camp Ashraf. <laughs> With great shrewdness, the Iraqi government planned and conducted those two attacks on Camp Ashraf while the Secretary of Defense, Secretary Gates, was in Iraq. How embarrassing it must have been for Secretary Gates. There were yes, U.S. troops in Camp Ashraf until ordered out several hours before the attack. Afterwards, Iraq refused them to come back in to return and assist with the dead and the wounded. The United States and Secretary Clinton are con confronted with two extremes of foreign policy towards Iran. On the far side, there is one that is complete and total acceptance of status quo. On the other side is forceful military actions to compel compliance by Iran. But please, listen. There is an alternative. There is a middle way that dramatically will affect Iran, distract them from the un their unacceptable adventures, and potentially create a regime change. That middle way is to support the Iranian opposition, to support Iranian resistance, to support the MEK. We can do so, and we should do so. Careful, prudent, and thought out support to the organized, effective, and ever-present Iranian opposition who some call the MEK, is essential. This organization will fund itself. This organization doesn't ask for anything. They don't want money, weapons, people, logistics, or support. They just want to be able to restore their homeland by themselves in accordance with the 2004 Statement of Principles as spoken by Madame Rajavi. Let me list them. Enjoy the rule of law and free elections. Participate in the freedom of religion. Deny nuclear weapons and weapons of mass destruction. Enjoy freedom of speech and freedom of press. Participate in complete gender equality. Establish a republic. Enjoy freedom of assembly. Implement market economy. Participate in peaceful coexistence. But most unfortunately, the United States is still stopping the MEK from aiding the world because we have them on the foreign terrorist list. We are in fact supporting Iran by leaving them on the list, and how confusing is that foreign policy? Camp Ashraf has been attacked twice as they had no weapons. None were employed by the MEK. They just locked their arms. Ten killed the first time, 
35 killed the second time. Clearly, this shows no intent and no capability to conduct terrorist activities. The U.S. government position should be reversed and done so fast. All of the Middle East is erupting and crying for democracy. We must not stand in their way. Immediate revocation of the terrorist list is essential. And we can do so because the petition remains with the U.S. government. The federal appeals courts in July directed the State Department to come back and show evidence of what allowed them to reach their opinion. The appeals court saw no classified or unclassified evidence to retain the terrorist organization. The government now, the U.S. government now, is 70 days late in coming back with their response to the appeals court. However, the European Union and U.K. have taken them off the terrorist list. We should do so also. They delisted them two years ago. There are 113 congressmen who requested their delisting. A similar resolution with bipartisan support in both houses is circulating right now. Taking the MEK off the terrorist list is one thing that must be accomplished. Another is protecting the people in Camp Ashraf. In accordance with the Geneva Convention and the residents of Camp Ashraf are actually designated as protected people. This protection should be led by the UN, UNAMIN, and supported with a detachment of U.S. soldiers in Camp Ashraf. There's no logic to assume Iraq will stop its efforts to totally eliminate Camp Ashraf. The United States must stay strong and remain committed as a world power to focus on its primary enemy in the Middle East, Iran. Currently, U.S. diplomats are recommending an internal rule relocation of the MEK and the Camp Ashraf residents. This is totally unacceptable. And continue, allow Iraqi to continue to harass the residents with the eventual elimination of all of the residents. This internal movement should not be part of U.S. foreign policy. Finally, this week, the French government eliminated all terror charges applied to the MEK in 2003. This was a success story. This was great news. It actually makes it so that there's little to no reason for the U.S. again to keep the MEK on the foreign terrorist list. Because of so-called intelligence in those days was passed around. And if it was flawed French intelligence in 2003 and got into the U.S. consideration in 2006, it should also be discarded. We now have the French, U.K., and the European Union all supporting and having done the delisting. The United States must follow. In closing, we as a nation must focus on the key objective, Iran. The MEK is the best dissident resistance group that can do that. Let's delist them. And let them assist the Iranian people as the jasmine wind or the Arab Spring moves to Iran. This time, a regime change to a democratic society can and will occur. The United States must delist the MEK. Thank you.